hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel if you are new to this channel please don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like don't forget to comment and to share if you are a subscriber already welcome back and thank you for stopping by so on this channel we talk about crimes that have happened in Zimbabwe, outside Zimbabwe, anywhere and everywhere where Africans are thriving. And I mostly talk about cases that have gone through the whole court process, but I'm not limiting myself to that either. I also talk about current cases that are of public interest. Okay, just as a disclaimer, everything that I talk about on this channel is already in the public domain. I love telling stories, but I do not make them up. Everything I talk about is already in the public domain. Thank you. Now, one other thing. I also have a Facebook page that is called Zim Crimes Channel. Please follow that page for updates and as well as for live feeds on um, anything crime, especially one's experience in the hands of law enforcement officers. If you are somebody who has an experience in the hands of law enforcement officials, don't hesitate to get in touch with me and we can talk about it. We can share with the public on my Facebook page page zim crimes channel my phone number is there on the facebook page you can get hold of me on whatsapp and we can schedule a live broadcast that's it housekeeping issues out of the way now let's go to today's video in today's video we're going to talk about somebody again who's very controversial and somebody who is very colorful and somebody who's seen her days in the courtroom a lot we are talking about Henrietta Rushwire. Yeah, the Zimbabwe Miners Federation boss, Henrietta Rushwire. So who's Henrietta Rushwire? Henrietta Rushwire was born in 1968 in Mashingo, and she trained at Morgan State Teachers College. So she's a qualified teacher. After that, not much is said about her childhood or about the years after her training. But she then worked for um, Harare Sports uh, association and in the year 2000 she was um, awarded a scholarship to go and study sports management in Norway and when she came back she started rising through the ranks so Henrietta went to Norway in the year 2000 to study sports management in the year 2004 she came back her first task was or at least her first official task that was publicly known it was the organization of a fundraising for the warriors that were supposed to travel to another country for a tournament. And after that, she became a director of sports in the then uh, vice president Musipa's office. In 2007, March, Henrietta Rushwaya became an executive in the Zimbabwe Football Association, ZIFA. And her rising continued. So apart from being a Zifa executive, let's just mention something. Henrietta Rishwaya is also a niece to the current sitting president, Idim Nangagwa. So she has a lot of political uh, influence or politically influential people in her corner. So in the between the year 2007 and 2008, Henrietta was charged with um, theft of money from Zifa, and she was tried in the courts. In the same 2008, she tried to field, she tried to field herself for a candidate of Go to South for the uh, MP, but she was not elected because she then got arrested, and she had to go through the courts for the theft charges that were. Um, brought on her for stealing money at the Zifa um, at the Zifa offices. She was trying also to use her political influence in the go to South constituents which she failed to grab. So her days at Zifa were marked with a lot of court appearances and a lot of um, arrests. In the year 2011, she was accused of having an affair with MDC Welshman Mube. Well, not that it's a crime, but yeah, it is actually also something that is linked to her name. In the year 2012, she was arrested and um, she was arrested by the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption something, the ZEC. Yeah, Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission something, something, Zach. And then she was arrested and she was linked to a lot of match fixing as well as um, match fixing and bribery of uh, match officials. If you have heard about the Asia Gate, yes, she was actually part of that. The Asia Gate match fixing scandal. She was also one of those people that were 
uh, fingered in that scandal. And then she came to court in the year 2012, facing 11 counts of concealing transactions from principal, as well as um, 15 others of robbery. Like, those were like some charges, and they involved over $1 million. So her days at Zifa were really marked with a lot of arrests and a lot of scandals. Yeah, let's just say scandals. So like I said, Henrietta Rishwai has lived a very colorful life. In the year 2014, she was arrested on charges of extorting hundreds of thousands of dollars from Walter Magaya, the Walter Magaya, Prophet Magaya, the church leader. As if that was not enough. In 2016, again, Henrietta found herself entangled in another match-fixing scandal. In 2016, she found herself entangled in another match-fixing uh, scandal where the Zimbabwean, war the Zimbabwean warriors traveled to Malaysia. She was found in the middle of a scandal that involved players, referees, as well as... Um, the soccer officials or the football officials so she was also arrested for that and she was charged for manipulating the games and manipulating the results <laughs> Henrietta Rishwaya figure fingered as the central figure in the Limpopo gate which was a scandal that um, came to light that involved the fixing of matches for a good six years that thing had been running for six years but eventually um, the scandal was availed and was like exposed rather and uh henrietta rushwaya was actually figured as the cent fingered as the central person in that scandal she was said to be the ringleader in that scandal for six years she was running that scam of mixing mix fixing matches the limpopo gates Eventually, in October of 2016, Zifa got tired of Henrietta's scandals and they believed that her name being attached to the organization was bringing disrepute to the organization. So she was fired in October of 2016. Yeah. Her days in the Zifa were really colorful and she had a lot of arrests and a lot of charges leveled against her name. Now, again, using her political influence and being the niece of a very powerful person in the country, in 2018, Henrietta was um, fielded as a candidate for the Zimbabwe Miners Association, uh, Miners Association presidents, and she won. So she became the president of the Zimbabwe Miners Association. Uh, association without any prior experience without any knowledge but apparently it turns out that she actually has a, a license uh, a mining license and she has a couple of claims in Kwekwe and in Shurugwe she has some gold claims to her name and she's obviously licensed so she, it turns out also that she actually is licensed as a gold dealer like she can buy and sell gold she has a license to trade in that as well so I'm not sure if the licenses came after she became the president or if she already had um, her licensing as well as her claims before she became the president. I don't know how she got her finger into the president. I don't know how she got her fingers into the uh, Zimbabwe Mines, Miners Association. But yeah, she became the president. She became the miners boss in the year 2018. So that's Henrietta, right? And Henrietta's, like I said, her life has been colorful and her charges, yeah, she has quite a range of charges to her name, including extortion, match fixing, um, uh, what, 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 extortion, match fixing, bribery. And to top the list, her current scandal or her current charge is actually on smuggling gold. Henrietta was arrested in the year 2020 when she was trying to board a plane at the Harare International Airport, which is also known as the Robert Mugabe International Airport, which was trying to actually leave the country with just above six kgs of gold. And she was arrested. Now the, the story unfolds like this. According to her, what did she tell the courts? She told the courts that she had actually packed the gold in a bag and she had packed her clothes in a different bag, but in, a, in another bag. But these bags looked similar. So somebody switched those bags and took the bag with the gold to the car and drove her to the airport. 
okay, the car that took her to the airport. So she says she picked the wrong bag by mistake or somebody picked a bag, the wrong bag by mistake. And she said to the courts that she is a licensed gold dealer. Surely it shouldn't be shocking that she has so much gold in her possession. But she said she never intended to take the gold out of the country. It was actually a mistake that she picked the wrong bag or somebody picked the wrong bag from the house. However, it is said that actually Henrietta was set up. Yeah, it is that she, she was actually trying to take the gold out of the country, but somebody set her up. Somebody tipped off the officials at the airport. It is said that when this thing came, when the whole, when she got to the airport, the officials already knew the security at the at the airport already knew that she was coming in with gold but ZRP could not arrest her because of her connections ZRP was even scared to, uh, to arrest her and she had to be arrested by military intelligence those were the only people that could get to her so apparently she would go through the VIP lounge where she would just go through a four minute or less um, walk through and then she would board the plane with her gold but on this particular day um, yeah, the military police had been tipped off, so she was arrested. She was found in possession of slightly over six kgs of gold, and she was arrested. Now, the papers that she carried together with the gold were actually papers that belonged to somebody called Ali Mohammed. Ali Mohammed is a, is a, is a multimillionaire a businessman in Zimbabwe, originally from Pakistan. So he actually distanced himself from this whole thing and said those documents were not his. He said everything that was on those documents was actually forged. It was not his documents. It was not his signature. It was not his stamp on those documents. Now, surrounding that case, there were a lot of speculations. Some people actually said that this gold belonged to Auxiliam Nangagwa and her son, Colin, of which those two distanced themselves from that. And they say they knew nothing about that. They were not into gold smuggling. They didn't know anything about gold smuggling. They were not part of that. But it turns out that there is actually a huge syndicate of people that are actually involved in this gold smuggling thing, not just gold, other things like diamonds. For a long time, Gucci Grace, Grace Mugabe was actually accused of smuggling gold out, no, no, gold, diamonds out of the country to Dubai, to other countries where she was apparently uh, building her afterlife. So, how this happens is because there is a syndicate, it is said that in the airport, in the VIP lounge, they turn off the cameras when the person is coming through. They know who is carrying what and they need to be given safe passage. So they turn off the cameras for a couple of minutes and this person passes through. If there is any chance that this person has been found by the wrong people, people that are not part of the syndicate, like what happened to Henrietta, there is always money that is there ready to bribe whichever official fishes it out first and whichever official is not part of the syndicate is quickly bribed. So it is actually now that Henrietta is facing bribery charges as well as this thing of trying to smuggle gold out of the country because she tried to bribe an official, allegedly. She tried to bribe an official at the airport when she was arrested. It is said to be some CIO guy. Now, Henrietta also told the courts that the only reason that this thing was done to her why somebody would pick a wrong bag and why people keep saying she was found trying to smuggle the gold out of the cut. Oh, by the way, when she said she picked the wrong bag, she actually asked the police to go with her to a house so that she could show them the correct bag that she was meant to take to the airport. The two bags are said to be in police um, storage in the evidence compartment, department. Now, I don't even know if the gold is still there. Like, guys, this has been... 2020 this is 2022 i don't know if the evidence is still there this is zrp but yeah the two bags are still said to be as part of evidence so they are still with the police so on this particular day that henrietta was arrested she is said to have tried to bribe an official and when she went to the courts she told the courts that 
she did not try to bribe anybody she didn't even know this person who is she who she's being accused of bribing and she also told the courts that these people that are all saying they are witnesses to this bribery nonsense are people that are being paid by other people other ambitious people that wanted to take her position as the president of the zimbabwe miners association or is it miners federation so people were, were trying to actually take that post from her were the ones that were paying these guys to lie on her. Oh, poor Henrietta. Why would people lie on you like that? Why can't they just go for the uh, elections and try to win this fan square? Why are they being so nasty, right? The weird thing, though, is in the year 2021, Henrietta still continued being the president of the association the miners association and she got that post unopposed so who are these people that were trying to pay other people to lie on her so that they could she could lose her position she went unopposed now going unopposed says a lot of things eh? other people are scared of her as a candidate they know how strong she is they know how powerful she is they know how good she's been with the association and they know people would not you know look the other side so they, they 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 don't even bother to contest or it could also mean that people knew already that this thing is going to go this way so why should we even bother ourselves or it could mean nothing it could mean that people don't have ambition right probably nobody else wants to be in that position so she continued to be the president of the zimbabwe miners federation or is it miners association I don't know in 2021 after being arrested in the year 2020 after being arrested for trying for trying to smuggle gold out of the country and also on bribery charges she continued being the president so who was trying to pay people off to lie on her why didn't they contest why did she have to go uncontested i don't know the moment Henrietta was arrested, uh, the Z, uh, MF tried to be swift and tried to be like clean, so they suspended her. That was in 2020, but in 2021, she came back as the president and she continued. For a while, that case has been like, I was thinking it's actually going cold, you know, until recently when I heard that she was in court for the uh, bribery charges. Yeah, she was in court for the bribery charges, which she was totally denying and she was applying for a discharge because she said there was no evidence that she tried to bribe anybody. And uh, she didn't even know this officer that she was said to be trying to bribe. Now, Hope Ochingono, <laughs> Daddy Hop was actually arrested and put in Chikurubi for tweeting something on Henrietta. Of course, it was because he also breached his bail conditions. He was not supposed to be treating staff while he was on his bail. It was part of his uh, bail conditions. I don't know if it's, it's a fair bail condition that you cannot go to public platforms and say out your mind. I think they were just trying to shut him up. But yeah, he breached his bail condition by tweeting something on about Henrietta's case and that landed him in Chikurubi maximum prison. As much as he was not supposed to be in, I mean like lawfully speaking, he was just supposed to be put in remand prison while waiting for his case, but he was put in the maximum, uh, maximum security prison. Like somebody who's already been tried and somebody who's already, who's already serving his time. Yeah. I mean, that, that should tell you how powerful and how connected Henrietta is. Or was it just that Hope Watching On actually broke the law or broke his bail condition? Now, let's look at one other thing that came up because of this gold smuggling scandal. It is said that people who were actually saying that... Um, this gold belonged to Axilium Nangagwa and her son. We try, we're on a smear campaign to sort of tarnish the current president's image. The same way people were tarnishing Robert Mugabe's image because of Grace um, shopping sprees and, you know, all those 
things that Greece was doing. So actually people thought this was supposed to be a political, a politically motivated statement that um, this gold belonged to Auxilium Nangago. It was meant to be a smear campaign. It was actually coming from another Zanpia faction that was trying to tarnish the image of Edim Nangago. But guys, when we go to the polls, do we even think about all that? I'm, I'm just thinking, do we even think about, oh yeah, they were involved in gold smuggling. Do, do, do voters really think about that when they go to the polls? I don't know. Like judging from the past, do these scandals affect somebody's political career in Zimbabwe, in a Zimbabwean setup? Probably in other countries it would affect, but in a Zimbabwean setup, do those allegations affect somebody's political career? I don't know. I don't see it like that. Like the Susan Mutama uh, accusations and allegations, do you think that would, that those would affect Edie's position as a president? Do you think those would affect his political influence in the country? I don't think so. I honestly don't think so. I think the way I look at the political situation in Zimbabwe is that as long as you're ZANU PF, you're clean. You are you're untouchable somehow, you know. These things don't really affect you the way they would affect other people. Imagine that the this um, gold smuggling thing had been diverted or had been placed on an opposition party uh, official. Surely people would have gone to town about this. I'm, I'm, I mean, even in the parliament, this would have been a debate for days. This would have been a topic for days, but because the first family was fingered in this, I feel like it just died a natural death somehow, you know? The fact that she said, uh, auxilia rather, auxilia that is, say that she was not involved, that's it. Take her word for it. Why are you to question her? She was not involved, she was not involved. She says she wasn't involved. We believe her. Oh, do we? Anyway. That is Henrietta Rishwaya. So Henrietta Rishwaya, uh, the last I read about her, she was waiting for her judgment on the um, on the bribery charge. She had actually said that she wanted it discharged, but she was it, the, the the magistrate said no. Nope. We are not going to discharge this. We are going to go through the whole process because there is evidence. There are witnesses to this, so we cannot apply for a D. And then for this gold smuggling one, I don't know when she would see her day in court for that, if it, if at it, all she will ever see her day in court. Because now look at it, Henrietta has had all these charges leveled against her. She has had all these trials, she has had all these cases. Has she seen the door of prison as a convicted person? Not according to my understanding, she has never. Or do these charges carry something else that is not a prison term? I don't know. Maybe they don't. Like these, um, the, 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 when she swindled um, Walter Magaya of some money, was there no evidence to that? Why is she not walking free? Why is she walking free? What about the match fixing um, scandals? Don't those have some penalty of some sort? Why is she not first in the music? I do not know. Now let's just wait and see what happens with her bribery case. And let's wait and see what happens with her gold smuggling case. Henrietta Rishwaya. Yeah. <sighs> Guys. Henrietta Rishwaya. When first did you hear about Henrietta Rishwaya? To be very honest, the first time I saw a picture of Henrietta Rishwaya was when he was on Ja Prezer's chest. When she was on Ja Prezer's chest. I'm sorry, I just had to bring that one in. So it is rumored that Henrietta Rishwaya once had a thing with the superstar Ja Prezer before he became a superstar. They had a thing. There's even a photo to go by. I don't know if it was just a thing or if it was just friendship, but mm, that photo is just so suggestive. But yeah, well, it's their personal lives. Like, honestly, those are personal lives That's, that don't affect the country. Those do not affect the economy of the country. 
those do not talk to the politics of the country. People do what they need to do to get by, right? Mm. Jeffries had to do what he had to do to get by. Henrietta had to do what she had to do to get by. But yeah. So anyway, guys, that's the video of the day. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. Now, I have questions for you guys, and I need you to comment in the comment box below and tell me what you think. First and foremost, why has Henrietta never gone to prison as a convicted person for all these things that she has done? Or has she? Am I missing something? But I never saw any anyway way it was said Henrietta had to go to prison. The only time that she, she was behind bars was in remand while she was waiting for her bail. Number two, Henrietta... This gold smuggling thing, do you believe that she actually picked a wrong bag or somebody picked a wrong bag by mistake or somebody was trying to set it up? Do you believe that she is clean? She had no intentions of smuggling gold out of the country or do you believe that she was actually trying to get, get this gold out of the country? What about these allegations that at the airport they turn off the cameras and people that are smuggling in things or smuggling things out of the country go through the VIP lounge where the cameras have been turned off and nothing is recorded about their coming or their going in the VIP lounge cameras. Well, what do you think about that? Do you think that Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwean economy has, uh, is being run by a mafia, by a group of very corrupt people that have links to high offices in the country. What do you think about the way the economy is run? Hmm. Guys, comment down below. Do you think Henrietta is clean in all this? Do you think the first family is clean in all this? Do you think that um, Henrietta will ever see a day in court concerning the gold smuggling issue? And what's with the Zach, this catch and release nonsense? What, what's up with that? Do you think Zach is really efficient or is really effective, rather not efficient, but effective? Or do you think it's just an organization that was set up just to make people think that something is happening? Because I've seen a lot of catch and release and nobody that I know has been convicted. Remember the issue about, was it Obed or that Minister of Health? who was caught up in some scandal about the, um, during the lockdown, is it the COVID thing, the, the, the vaccines, or was it the, the, the COVID material? And he was um, arrested by Zach, or he was taken up by Zach, and was accused of defrauding the country of some millions of dollars. What happened to him? He resigned. The story ended. Do you think... There is ever a way that anybody who's linked to high offices in the country will ever be accountable for their actions in Zimbabwe. Do comment down below. Take care of yourselves, guys. Stay away from crime because if you do crime, you are most likely to do the time. And if in your country or in your place of residence, the COVID pandemic is still happening, do take care of yourselves. Protect yourselves. Do what you need to do to stay safe and be blessed. Goodbye.